Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough on the 2020 New Camp Tab 400. So just to get you started going on up front up here, we're going to have a uh, two inch ball with a lock coupler here. All you're going to do to uh, disconnect is pull up on this and pull back and that's going to see you can remove this. That's going to pull back on that and allow the ball to be released. To latch on, all you're going to do is slide it forward. Make sure these ears here do sit all the way down into the frame. Uh, to power everything while we're in uh, uh, towing, we're going to have our standard seven way to run all of our lights, turn signals, brakes, all of that good stuff. And to raise and lower the front of the trailer, we're going to use a standard uh, crank tongue jack. And then we also have our safety chains that will clip onto our receiver hitch uh, for safety purposes. Uh, moving on up here is where our propane is going to be stored inside of our cover here to open this all you're going to do is turn this latch and lift the lid inside you're going to find your 20 pound propane cylinder you can either replace this exchange it or refill it um, very simple process to do just close your cylinder remove your gas line loosen your wing nut down in here and pull the cylinder out and then just drop your new one in reconnect your gas line and turn your cylinder back on. After that, close the lid and lock it shut for travel. Moving over here to the off door side of the trailer, we have just a few things going on. To start right here, we've got some uh, tire information as well as a weight for a full tank of water. Do stick to these guidelines as far as tire pressures go in tire size, and this will help you when you're trying to figure out your weight requirements. Underneath, we have your uh, forward stabilizer. These are just stabilizer jacks. You're just gonna run them down with the supplied crank handle, or you can use a three quarter inch socket on a uh, drill to run them down. Once they hit the ground, all you're gonna do is just snug them up a little bit, and that's it. Do make sure they are raised all the way up for travel. Moving down just a little bit from there, we're gonna find our dump station. This is gonna be for our black water and gray water dump. Uh, the handle on the left, black, is going to be for our body waste, which is going to be our black tank or our toilet water. On the right, you'll find your gray handle. This one's going to be for your shower and sink water. What you're going to do is just remove the cap, hook your sewer hose onto it, and you're going to want to leave your black tank closed until it's full. You can leave your gray valve open if you're going to be staying a while. If not, just leave it shut. When you get ready to dump, dump your gray, uh, black tank first, let it dump and then close it off and follow it with the gray to wash it out. Um, another cool thing that this trailer is equipped with is a black tank flush. This is just above the dump station. This will help get your black tank nice and clean so you don't end up with sensor issues or any kind of uh, buildup in there. Easy, easy to set up. All you're gonna do is hook up a flush hose. Do not use your fresh water hose on this. Buy a separate water hose to connect to this. Hook it up, turn it on, Keep your black valve open with your sewer hose hooked up to the dump and that'll be that. Let it run for a good five to 10 minutes and you'll be good and rinsed out. When you're done, close your valve, disconnect your hose, you're all done. Moving over from there, we're gonna find our exterior shower. Uh, very simple process here, just a shower. You have hot and cold water here to use and to use it, all you're gonna do is push down on the lever. It's gonna lock in place. When you're done spraying whatever it is, just push back on the uh, lever there and it'll release. To store it, tuck your ho hose in. That fits in there just like that. And close your door, push down on the uh, latch there and it'll close. Moving over from there, we've got your wheel and tire. Check your tire pressures regularly. Remember to stack, stick to the manufacturer's re recommended pressure. And we've got your lug nuts here. Those do need to be torqued to 100 foot pounds. It is recommended to check those um, at least before every trip. Moving over from there, we're gonna have your uh, water area. So this is gonna be for your fresh water tank or your uh, uh, potable water that you wanna carry or use when you don't have connection to a water hose. All you're gonna do is put your water hose in, fill it up until the water gushes back out or comes back up out of this little vent here and you're full and ready to go. If you're gonna hook up to a water hose, you're just gonna open this little flap, connect your water hose to it and turn the water on at the uh, faucet and you're gonna be good to go 
uh, for city water connection. And the other thing about city water is, is you can open this little flap here that's on the door, have your hose connected and lock it shut. And that kind of just keeps everything secured. Moving over from there, we're gonna find a couple of more connections. We're gonna have our cable connection here, which is gonna be for a cable connection or an antenna connection to it for your TV. Other than that, that's about all that does with a little cover that goes down. Just above that, you're gonna find a portable solar port. Uh, this is gonna be where you can hook in just about any portable solar panel uh, to recharge your batteries. Over from that, we're gonna find your 30 amp connection. Uh, which is a very simple connection. On your cord, you'll see you've got two prongs and one that's slightly L-shaped. You're gonna have this same setup inside the receptacle. Just make sure you line up the two L prongs. Slide your cord on, give it a slight twist to the right, and then use your lock ring to secure the cord to the trailer so we don't accidentally knock it out. Moving over from there, we have a rear compartment. Uh, with a baggage catch to hold that open when you're in there working. And here we're gonna find a couple of things. First off, we're gonna find our water heater bypass valve. This is gonna be for winterization purposes when you need to bypass the water heater and you're gonna inject antifreeze into the system. Um, other than that, we've got your Audi temp control. This is gonna be for the water heater, um, the hot water coming out of the Audi system to adjust temperatures. It is preset for the factory and we don't really recommend messing with it, but it is there if we do need to make adjustments. Other than that, we've got a couple of drains in here. We've got uh, some uh, pressure, pressure pop-off valves back here for the hot and cold side. And then just forward up here in the front, we've got two more low point drains uh, for the water system. To close this, you're just gonna lift up on the baggage catch, close the door and that's gonna be a keyed lock. Moving over from there, we've got your Audi exhaust. If you're running your Audi system on gas, this is where the exhaust is gonna come out so this can get hot. So just be cautious when you're working around it and don't burn yourself or anybody else. Uh, just behind that, we've got a storage, a little storage tube, which is designed for a sewer hose. Uh, some sewer hoses are gonna fit in here. A lot of your premium hoses are not as they will be too long. And that pretty much covers the off door side of the trailer. So let's move around to the back. Onto the back, there's not a whole lot going on, but we do have obviously your tail lights and we've got where we're gonna mount your license plate for you, uh, for your temp anyway, and then you'll get your hard plate in the mail. And we also, it comes equipped with a backup camera. Now in order for this camera to work, you do have to have the trailer lights on. So that will give power to the camera and allow it to operate. Other than that, underneath, you're gonna see you have your rear stabilizer jacks. Again, these operate just like the front ones, can be run with the supplied crank handle, or you can use a three quarter inch socket adapter on your uh, drill, and you just snug them up. So moving over here to the door side of the trailer, we've got the uh, vent for your gray tank. And just forward of that, we're gonna have a storage compartment. This is a good, pretty decent sized storage compartment. Again, we've got a baggage catch that'll hold the door open, and inside, this is going to be your supplied crank handle for your stabilizer jacks, as well as anything else that you would like to put in here. On the forward wall in here, you will find your battery disconnect switch. Um, you, if you can see in here, you'll see that it's green and the battery is facing left to right, which is connected. When it's disconnected, your battery is going to be running up and down. And on the far side, it'll actually be red. You just, it's difficult to see. So on, off. Keep it on when it's in use or when you're using it. When you're gonna put it in storage, turn it to the off position. Other than that, you can store whatever you can fit into this compartment. And when you close it, it's gonna be one uh, thumb latch and one keyed lock. And it also reminds you that with a sticker that your battery disconnect is in there. Moving over from there, just to the left of the door, we do have two uh, 110 exterior receptacles for anything that you would like to plug into those to run on the exterior. Uh, moving just to the step of the trailer. This is pretty cool. Your uh, safety light here that they've put on the step is actually controlled by the step. So it turns on and off when the step is either deployed or stowed for travel. And last but not least, just right around here to the front of the trailer, we have the spare tire hanger. 
spare tires mounted underneath and this is how we're going to cr uh, crank it up and down and it's supplied with a wrench and that's just going to go on and then you can crank it up and down just like so a lot like they are on most vehicles and then to reverse the wrench it has just a little lever or you can flip it over whichever you choose and snug your spare back up in there that pretty much covers the exterior of our 2020 tab 400 so let's go check out the inside so just on the inside of our door here we've got a couple things going on first off our latch if you take a look here, you'll see a red and green on our latch. When this is pushed up from the inside, that's gonna be the lock position. So as you can see, our latch won't move. Uh, so that's locked. When this is center between the green and the red, that is gonna be unlocked and allow access from the exterior. If you push down on this into the green, that's gonna be your handle, uh, your release for the inside. And that's how your door, lat, uh, door lock works. Moving down from there, we've got your fire extinguisher. Do test this periodically, little green button on top, push it down, make sure it pops back up, everything pops up, you're good to go. We've got a little waste basket uh, over from there. And our window, we do have some privacy, comes equipped with a shade that just slides up and down. And a couple of storage bins for small items that you can store here. So moving just inside the trailer here, before we even get inside, there's gonna be a couple things right here to the right. First off is gonna be our power inverter on off button. This is gonna power one outlet in the bedroom when you are dry camping or using the trailer without any 110 power. You're just gonna turn this on and that's gonna turn on one outlet and I'll show you where that outlet is located in the bedroom. Uh, just to the bottom of that, we've got a 12 volt accessory outlet with two USB ports for running any type of uh, accessories or charging up cell phones, anything like that. And just to the left of that, we have your GFCI outlet. Um, as you can see, you do need to test these periodically. Uh, press the black button, the green light should go off. Press the red button, the green light should come back on. That's gonna keep power moving throughout the trailer. Just remember whenever you have GFCI outlets that they do power multiple outlets. And if one is not working, check all your GFCIs, make sure that they're all good and not tripped. Ah and screen door at the entry. So we have a screen door here. The, so if you like to keep your trailer open, run the roof uh, fan, keep windows open, but keep the bugs out, we've got your screen door. And it just is very easily usable there. So moving up to the top here, when we come in the door is gonna kind of be our central command for this whole trailer. We've got our Audi, our Air 8, and then our New Camp uh, monitor panel going on here. So just to start on our Audi system, uh, power button, menu button. Uh, there's a lot of features that can go on with this and the Air 8. It's highly recommended that you review the owner's manuals as well as take a look at some videos online or give our guys a call if you have any questions about operation. Um, power button is just basically on and off. So if you wanna turn it on, it's, this is for the Audi. Just turn it on, it's gonna load up. You're gonna push your menu button and you can see here we've got room temp. Uh, this is gonna be like a boost for your shower and this is gonna be your electric, and this is gonna be your gas operation. So gas, green is on, blue is off. So on the 110 element, you can turn it off, or you can do one kilowatt or two kilowatt. Two kilowatts gonna heat faster, but use more power. And this is, like I said, it's kind of like a shower boost. You can turn that down. If you've got a lot of people that need to shower, it is recommended to turn it up high. And then here you can just adjust your uh, room temperature as to where you want the Audi system to turn off at based upon the temperature in the cabin. Um, and that is just for heat only. And so then off is off. Just below that, we've got our air eight controls. This is gonna be the air conditioning for the system. To use it, center button here is gonna be our power. Just touch it. And we've got different modes that we can cycle through here. You can see that we've got the snowflake, which is cooling, the fan here, which is fan only. And then we've got kind of like a moisture drop or a raindrop, which is gonna be a dehumidifier. So in the cool mode down here, we can set our fan speed. And then the positive and the negative is gonna set our temperature. Uh, so 61 is gonna be the, as cold as it'll set. And, you, uh, and there's all, a lot of different things that you can do with programming this thing as well. So once again, do check with, uh, check your owner's manual check some uh, information on YouTube. There's a lot of good stuff out there to help you get through the operations of these. And then just to the right is gonna be our new camp 
monitor panel. We can monitor our gray, black, fresh tank levels as well as our battery level. Just by pushing the button, you're gonna get little lights and tell you how full everything is. Just below that, we're gonna have four switches. First one's gonna be our water pump switch. If that switch is up and the light is on, our water pump is on, off. And then we've got our porch light, which runs our porch light right over the entry door. Um, it's an amber light, so it helps minimize uh, bugs and it's LED, so we minimize temperature. Our sink light is gonna be our lights right here um, above our sink. You can see those turning on and off. And then we've got our accent lighting, which uh, kind of runs in this track right here and it also goes all the way around your dinette so it gives you a really cool um, some really cool effect there looks great in this in this camper so moving in here to the front this is going to be our dinette slash uh, secondary bed area um, I've got it made into the bed right here as you can see. This is actually a filler cushion that just uh, can be stored or placed anywhere you would like to put it or you don't even have to bring it along if you're not planning on making this down into a bed. But to pop this thing up, um, it's a good idea to move these cushions out of your way if you can. It just makes life a little bit easier. And then to release this thing, on the back end of the table here, there's two white latches. You have to start on the back end. Ready? Almost. No. Okay, so on the back end of this table where it clips to the wall, you can see there's two latches. You have to push those latches down and then you're gonna be able to pick that table up. And then we're just gonna clip it back onto this top rail back here. And our leg here has a little lever on it that you'll push up and extend down, and that makes our dinette table. Um, and then all we have to do is put our cushions back in place. Right, before I do that, there is a small storage area under here. Uh, this is accessible only from the inside of the uh, camper, so do remember that. No, this one's screwed shut. There, you want to shoot it real quick? Yeah, just tell me that it's screwed okay. up. Okay. There is an access panel under this side. It's not really for customer access. It's more for repair access or electrical access as your uh, power converter and everything is under there. All right, so just uh, moving down under the table here, we do have our uh, power distribution panel. It's going to have all our 110 breakers and our 12 volt fuses in here. They are labeled as to what they operate. Um, your 12 volt fuses are uh, the exact same thing that's in your car. Runs all your 12 volt uh, accessories in here. And your 110 breakers are just like what's in your house. Check these if you're having any kind of power issues. And back here we've got our LP alarm, LPCO alarm. Uh, this is gonna detect any kind of leaks or anything, make a really loud beeping noise to alert you if there is an issue. And just up to the uh, off door side of the dinette, you're gonna find your smoke alarm. This is just like your smoke alarm that is in your house. It does have a nine volt battery in it. Do check it periodically, just as you would the ones in your house. All right, moving on to our uh, galley or sink area. We're gonna have our Dometic sink here with a nice glass lid. We're just gonna open that up. This is a fold down faucet. Do remember to fold this down and put this down when you get ready to travel. This is glass it could end up broken if it slams shut. To use your faucets, very simple. This lever is gonna pull out. As you can see, it pulls out, and then you'll see a blue here and a red back here on the back side. So this is gonna be for your temperature control. You're just gonna turn the knob front to back for temperature control, in and out for water flow control. And it does come with a sink stopper if you do need to stop up the sink to hold water. And then to store, store for travel, just push it down and close the lid. Um, just underneath our sink, we have a good sized storage area. Both of these open up and you can store um, pretty much whatever you would like down here. Uh, just watch out for your water connections that are back there against the wall uh, not, that you don't damage those or knock them loose or anything like that. To operate the latch on this, 
it's just a push latch you're just going to push it in that's going to be locked to release it just push it you can see it pops out and that allows you to open the cabinet there moving over from there uh, just above the sink you're going to find your microwave uh, operates just like a microwave has a standard turntable in it um, all that good stuff operates just like the one in your house uh, just to the right of there we're going to have a storage cabinet uh, it does have a little lever behind the handle you can see there you just have to push down on it it's real natural when you go to open it if you put your hand on top and just pull it open inside this cabinet you will see your 110 outlet for your microwave back there as you're putting stuff in and out of the cabinet just make sure you don't accidentally knock that loose um, moving down behind the sink you're going to find uh, one of our windows for this to operate it's very simple all of the windows that open in this trailer open the same uh, it just depends on how many latches they have so you're just going to rotate the two black latches if you've got one with a red button or a middle on it you have to push that button in and then rotate it and that allows you to open your window if you want to secure it open each strut has a lock knob on it that you do have to turn and that's going to help keep that window open when you get ready to close it just turn your knobs do support the window so it doesn't slam shut and close it in and when you get ready to close the ones with the red buttons you do have to push the button again to close uh, for your shades all your shades in here that operate all have a day night shade uh, so you have your day screen which is kind of like a bug screen so when you have things open you get a nice breeze through here it doesn't block it off um, and then if you want to use your uh, night screen you're just going to raise the whole thing up these two can be clipped together with this clip here and then you just separate them by pulling slightly out on that clip and you're back separated do you want to explain the second channel on these <clears throat> what is the second channel just for ventilation yeah. <coughs> so one other thing on these windows uh you can just kind of prop them open so if you look here you'll see that there's another channel inside each of these levers so you can take and just barely prop that open and that's just going to allow for a small amount of ventilation to come in to, to ventilate and allow fresh air into the trailer without having this thing wide open really good in like a rainy situation uh, just behind the sink there is another gfci outlet just like the one by the entry door uh, remember to test those periodically and remember that they do control multiple outlets so if you are having electrical outlet issues do check uh, your gfci's make sure none of them are tripped uh, we do have a couple of drawers here for uh, storage as well as for silverware in your galley here uh, and then down here we do have a big uh, cabinet space and we have our refrigerator as you can see there's a control knob all the way in the back corner here with zero through five settings five being your coldest zero being off and just below the refrigerator we have another storage drawer all right so that brings us to our two, bur two burner cooktop from dometic very easy to light obviously make sure your gas is on you've got two knobs one for each burner all you're going to do is turn this knob to what kind of looks like a an electric bolt if you will which is where you're going to turn it to light it and then you're going to push in on the knob and you do have to use a stick lighter of some sort to light them after you get it lit hold that button down for about another five or ten seconds give it a chance to warm up and then you're good to go and you can set your um, you know your flame height or your temperature or whatever you'd like to call it there when you're done just turn it off um, I recommend letting these cool before you put the glass top down just so we don't overheat it cause any kind of cracking or anything like that once it's cooled off close it down and you are good to go uh, let's move into the bathroom so in our bathroom here we've got quite a bit going on um, first in here we've got our shower just to the left our shower controls this is a uh, very nice sleek looking shower head but all you're going to do is pull this lever out towards you and then you can rotate it left to right depending on your temperature and there are little color indicators on there that are kind of hard to see 
right there on the uh, control there for your temperature. Left is hot, right is cold, and you can adjust your shower um, head height up and down. All you do is rotate this little lever in the back, it rotates that whole piece and allows it to move up and down. We've got our uh, galley, I'm sorry, our bathroom sink, uh, folds up against the wall here. Uh, whenever you're needing to be in here and take a shower, this does need to be, does it need to be down for travel? I don't think they stay up though. I mean, there's nothing that latches it there. Now eh, we won't even say that. So this just stores up like this uh, for when you're in there taking a shower. Again, this is the same style faucet as your kitchen sink, and it just folds up for storage. Pull the lever out away from the faucet for on and off, and then you can rotate back and forth for your temperature control. It does come with a stopper, so you can plug up the drain if you need to. Uh, however, this sink doesn't hold a lot of water, so just pay attention to what you're doing. And make sure the lever's all the way back so it doesn't accidentally turn on. <laughs> uh, top left over here, this big black square. That's actually going to be our lighting for the bathroom. Uh, accent lighting in where our towels and other things can go. And then on the ceiling is going to be a light with a little push button right here on it to give you some additional lighting in here. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know how we're going to do this. Here, I'll see if I can just lean in here. We're just going to have to get close for a minute. So up on the ceiling, uh, we also have another vent fan in here um, that has little flaps that open up on the side. So this thing can be used pretty much any of the time. All you do is rotate this, and when it's facing this way, uh, left to right, our side vents are open. When it's facing front to back, our side vents are closed. So when it's open, we push our little red button, and our fan comes on and helps pull air out. Uh, you can see a track that goes all the way around the shower. That's for your shower curtain that's provided here by New Camp. And our toilet, last but not least, is a foot flush. Um, has a little lever on the right side, or I'm sorry, on the front. Uh, halfway down is going to put just water in, so always apply add water before you get on with it and then when you're done you're going to push it all the way down and that's going to allow the flap to open and everything in the toilet to go down into the black tank. Your uh, toilet paper holder here has a lid on it to keep it dry while you're in there showering. And that pretty much takes care of our bathroom. Moving on from there we're going to find our um, closet space. In here, we're going to have a clothes rod where you can hang some clothes up on the top and storage compartments on the side. You'll also see your Audi um, reserve tank in the back. This is where the glycol levels can be checked and seen in there, kind of like checking the coolant on your car. And just below that, you'll see another lid that says, this is not a storage compartment. There is going to be access for water lines and ducting and electrical other things for service purposes the light in here is in the top left little strip light and it just has a little push button on it right here and you can adjust the brightness right there, just like that Um, our Jensen TV back here in the back to get this to release from the wall they have put a little loop on here all you're gonna do is tip it to the right and that's gonna allow you to pull your TV out and you can turn that so you can watch it from the dinette or you can push it back against the wall watch it while you're in bed however you'd like to do that um, anytime you move just remember you do need to rerun an auto scan uh, for TV and it is recommended with the New Camp products to purchase a separate antenna uh, for your TVs. It's going to give you a lot better TV reception. And then to store it, just tuck it back, push it in. You'll hear it lock. Give it a little tug. Uh, make sure everything stays in place. Um, and then another one of these big black light switches right here is going to kind of give us our little accent lighting that's back here um, at the headboard or your head side of the bed, along with a couple of reading lights. 
These are pretty cool. They do have some blue accent lighting you can see there on them. If you long press the buttons on them, they'll turn white and give you a little more of a bright light there to um, read with or such. Uh, just around the corner on the top here is where you'll find your Jensen radio. This is going to be where you're going to play all your DVDs, music, anything like that from. It's also Bluetooth capable, so you can pair your phone with it, stream uh, audio through it that way. And last but not least, um, in the bedroom area, this little, I told you about the uh, button back there by the door that controls a power inverter. You'll find an outlet down here in this little cubby. Um, it's got a 110 outlet and two USBs on it. That outlet can be powered by turning that on um, if you are dry camping once again without 110 power. If you're plugged into 110, it works anyway, um, so everything will be good there. And your bed is equipped with the uh, what they call the Frolly Sleep System. It's kind of like a inner spring, if you will, uh, kind of makes your bed a little more comfortable in these trailers. And underneath here, you will find some access. Again, this is going to be a, not a storage area, but you'll find like your air eight. You'll find your big power inverter. Um, again, this is going to be a service area for maintenance issues, things like that. Guys, thanks for walking through with us today. I think that covers our 2020 tab 400. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, reach out to Princess Craft. Um, uh, call our service team or our sales team. Anybody here can give you a hand. And um, thanks so much.